With so many things being asked of teachers today, it seems that the core of teaching is often left at the end, and so our students are going to suffer. And so I am here today to help you think through and simplify your lesson planning process to make teaching easier. Hi and welcome to Yasaro's Early Learning. I am Corbola Guy and here we talk about all things kindergarten and a bit of preschool to make sure children have a firm foundation in reading skills. So today we're going to have a little chat quick because I know you are busy, right? So we're going to have a quick chat about lesson planning. And I know that for many teachers, this can be a source of pain, <laughs> but it does not have to be. And I think it's better when you have a framework to work through that makes your lesson planning so much easier and much more simple. A framework coupled with resources that help you achieve your goal allow you to be that stellar teacher that everyone just wonders, how do they actually do that? How do they make it seem so effortless? And then you can be that person that passes on that framework to your colleagues to make teaching easier for everyone. Because at the end of the day, when things are easier for us, I know this is true for me, when things are easier for us, we are more likely to do it and stick to it. And when, as teachers, when we are able to stick to things and, and teach better, our students learn better, we're more observant, we can meet their needs easier and with less stress, right? So here's the framework I would like for you to walk through. And it's actually a series of questions because I believe lesson planning should be as simple as possible, as straight to the point as possible. Once you understand your students, and you understand what your district or country expectations are, you walk through this framework every single time you have to do a lesson and it is so easy. It makes it very clear for you. And if anyone else needs to look at your lesson plans, it makes it clear for them. All right, so here are my uh, questions and I just titled them, Keep It Simple, right? So. What skill are you teaching? That's the first thing we need to understand so that we do not get lost in the sauce of everything else happening because we know how chaotic our classrooms can get. But if we can hone in and stick to what skill or concept am I teaching? What skill or concept am I having my students learn and master? Because then everything builds around that, right? Because we have the child in the middle. We know what our children like, what they dislike, where their skill levels are, blah, blah, blah. Our next thing is what skills do they need to learn? Because again, learning is a journey and we are there to guide them. And you can only be an effective guide if you know where we're trying to go, right? So what skill am I trying to have my students learn? Then, how well do they understand this skill? <laughs> that is another critical question and it requires a, a planning, prior planning. So if I'm trying to teach skill X and I don't know how well they get it, my lesson that I plan may be pitched too high or pitch too low, and either one will cause a problem. Because if it's pitch too high, frustration will set in, you'll have disengagement, you'll have uh, behavior problems, and then it may actually end up setting children up for, um, especially if it's something the first time they're being introduced to, you will have uh, resistance when you try to come back and correct it. So you have to know where they are so you don't pitch it too high. If it's pitch too low, they'll be bored, and bored children, um, can, can make the classroom miserable as we all know, right? If it's pitched too low, your kids will be done really quickly. They won't care. They'll be like, why am I doing this? The thing is, I always like to remember how I would feel if something was pitched at me. Things that are pitched at me too low, why, why are you talking to me about this? And I try to give the same respect to the students I was teaching because I, I, I really just did not want a headache. So knowing what skill I'm trying to teach and how well my students already understand this skill, critical questions to answer as you are planning. Then 
because our children are young and we know their attention span is short, how will you teach the core of this skill in five to seven minutes? Because some, some of us will say, yeah, circle time, uh, direct instruction time, 15 minutes, but you know of those 15 minutes, you're going to lose minutes with behavior problems, you're going to lose minutes with transitions, you may lose minutes with random things happening. Like I said, the, the life in the classroom is just, it can get overwhelming if you're not prepared. But if you're thinking, what skill, how well do they know it, what core thing, what is this one thing I need them to know? or to understand, or to be able to do. How am I going to do that direct instruction in five to seven minutes? That's it, five to seven minutes of instruction on this one thing in a way that will prime them and stick in their head. Because as we go on, you'll see, this isn't your only opportunity, but this is your chance to you know, stand there and, and make sure that they get this information. This is your five to seven minutes to be the sage on the stage, as we say. And we're not always trying to be the sage on the stage, but there's a time and place for being the guide on the side and the sage on the stage. And those five to seven minutes, you have the information, you are giving it to them. How are you going to do that? Then, how will you provide hands-on learning around the skill in both small groups and independently? See, this is where, you know, like we all know, I do, we do. So now you're backing off, looking at your broader classroom. You've done those five to seven minutes of direct instruction. Now they're gonna go off and do activities around the classroom and you have your small groups, right? So how are you going to go ahead and make sure this skill is taught it, children are experiencing this skill with and without you. How am I going to do that, right? Then how will I assess this skill? How will I know if they've mastered it? This is the framework that you can walk through for your lessons. And if you can answer these questions, I'm telling you, you will see how your lesson will be cohesive and targeted. So now that I've given you this framework, which is quite theoretical, let's walk through a sample that I put together myself, right? So question one was, what skill am I teaching in this plan here? And it's just my plans written out just like that, right? Hope you can, hopefully, so you can't see it. All right, but it's on my phone. It's very simple. And I think it took me maybe I was thinking of the last class I taught as I put this together and it took me maybe 15 minutes to answer these questions. Um, it will take you a little longer because as we go through you'll see the, the different sections you'll want to make sure you, you accommodate. But let's say question one, what skill are you teaching? In this plan I'm teaching ending sounds. Okay. Question two, how well do your students understand this? So I put 50% or 50 still struggle, and I know this because I did a formative assessment the week before. So that's how you get that information. You would have had to do some kind of assessment close to when you're about to teach this skill because you know our children develop pretty quickly. So that formative, that, that assessment you did a couple months ago and you get to that skill, well, they may have learned it along the way. You may have been teaching it and not even realized that they may have a friend who's taught it to them and, and you know they've mastered it more, they've mastered it or they've progressed along it, um, it progressed towards mastery faster. So you need to, to make sure you have a, uh, an affirmative assessment to inform your planning right around the time you're about to introduce this skill. All right, question three was, how will you teach the core of this skill in five to seven minutes? All right, so here's what I said. I will play a listening game. When they hear t, they will stand up. So it's a circle time. I will have a list of five, or two lists of five words in each. Five that end with the t sound and five that don't. I will ask children what sound they're listening for and when they heard it. So we'll play the game, they have to, I'll say a word, they have to, if they hear t, they have to stand up. So if I say can, and three kids stand up, or I know, I, I know they're not hearing it. If I say cat, and 
they stand up and a couple are sitting down, then it's, it's still giving me an idea, right? Then I will point out that t is at the end, all right? Then we can play the game again and you are listening for the t is t at the beginning or at the end. Five to seven minutes, quick and easy. Then question four, how will you provide hands-on learning around the skill in both small group and independently? So here's where you as a teacher will have to look and see what do you have in your class? How do you structure after you have your um, whole group time with your students, which is no more than 15 minutes, right? Because we have good practice in our classrooms. And when they go off to do independent things in the role play area and blocks and science, computer area, whatever you have in your classroom, how are you planning those areas out to make sure that skill is being addressed? So here's what I thought, remembering what I had in my classroom. I said, in small groups, we'll first use cards to review ending sounds because I have some of those. I will link them in the at the bottom of this video so you can see. There are these cards I have that have the, the beginning, the um, letters at the beginning sound, at the beginning of the word, and then the ending sound is missing. And the ending sound we will fill in together as a, a small group. Then we'll play a board game with ending sounds. So at small group, my children will still have a bit of direct instruction, and then we will have a game that we play together in their 10 minute small group, right? Because you have to rotate them through and you want to make sure in your small groups that they have lots of time for hands on learning. So those cards would be quick recap of what we just did in whole group. And then the, the game that we'll play together in small group also reviews that skill, but it's fun and it's giving them a chance to practice it independently while I sit and guide and scaffold and support, right? But at centers, I would put out task cards, I would put Legos out where they have the pictures on them and they have uh, letters and they have to match the ending sound so they, they can build like that. At, I would put out computer games that have children focusing on the ending sounds, simple self-correcting computer games. I have a couple in this shop. And at the sand table, I would have children sift and match objects to, that have the same ending sounds. And in a role play, they can big bake ending sound cookies, right? So those are just a few things of thinking in my classroom. Oh, I forgot, see, even me, I forgot the art, the art area. What would I do for art? I'd have to plan for that. So what I would suggest for this section is you would think of your classroom and just on your lesson plan template, list out each of your areas that you would have and then exactly what you would do right? Because you would have things that are always there, but then you would have things that you're adding to make sure children are mastering this skill. All right. And then question five, how would you assess? Simple. I love exit tickets. I love exit tickets. Super easy to do. So what you could simply do, what I have here is exit tickets with three pictures and children would circle the two pictures that have the same ending sound. That's it. And that would be my lesson. See how walking through this framework keeps me targeted and focused on exactly what skill am I teaching and then how am I teaching this skill. Making And it forces me to think of hands-on ways that incorporate every part of my classroom and uh, make sure my students are able to do this alone as well as uh, with me. I could have had card games for them to play. There's so many options. If you would like to check out the web, my website, the shop in there, there are, um, the shop is divided by different skills that you may need to be teaching. Go ahead and check in there and see what you could print and prep so that when it's time for you to walk through this framework of how to lesson plan for teachers who have no time, you can have resources that make teaching easier. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that was helpful. Please be sure to leave any comments, questions, DM me with any questions and any resources you'd like to further support making teaching easier in your classroom. Thank you very much and I'll see you guys later. Bye.